Hello everybody and welcome back to our 16th Beginners Java Game Development Tutorial. And uh, if you remember last time we added in our nice little music here. And we've got quite a fun game actually. Um, it's endless, it gets a bit harder as the game progresses. And uh, we're pretty much coming to the end of the series. And uh, there's a couple of things we still have to do. We need a kind of score system. Um, let's turn this off. And uh, what else do we need? We need uh, to add back in our enemy. We need to do some level design. But I think today what I want to do is actually work on a bit of a menu so we can just navigate the game a little bit easier. And so what we're going to do is in our uh, game project, we're going to create a new package, I think. And we'll just call this UI. And in UI, we're going to make a couple of... Um, not a couple, we'll just make a menu handler class. And this can a render, which will take it a graphics G. And now what we're going to do, there's a couple of different ways that we could do this. But I think for educational purposes, what I want to do is maybe in... We'll say in core. We're going to make a enum. Okay, an enum called game state. And basically, we can put a whole ton of different stuff in here. We can say A, uh, B, C, and it's kind of just like a list. Okay, so we can have a couple of different game states. And so I'm going to say uh, we'll have game as a game state have menu as a game state and we'll have um restart menu as a game state or maybe we could say game over as a game state instead and so what we're going to do is we're going to come into window and we're going to create a public um game state gs and we're going to set this originally to game state dot menu okay and there's a couple of things we have to do first of all we don't want to generate the level straight away so now if we run the game there we are. should pretty much just be that uh, and let's just fix up a couple of errors we're going to get now that the game is not running. So we're going to just in render say uh, if player is not equal to null. Let's run it again. Yep, we get another error. And it's the same problem. Let me just say if player is not equal to null. There we go. The game is working okay. Um, alrighty, so what we're going to do is come into window, and level equals new level handler, we want to keep that, plus the music, um, for now I'm going to comment it out, and what else are we going to do, we're going to come down to tick and say if, yes, equals game state, dot game uh, then we want to say level dot tick and likewise we're going to copy this and say the exact same in our render so basically if we're in the game we're going to render and update the level um, otherwise if we're in the menu and I work in a menu dot tick And we are going to menu.render. Fantastic. And we need to create the menu. And so what we're going to do is basically create a public uh, menu handler menu. And we 
create the tick method in our menu. Uh, the game should um, oh, I will just say that's equal to a new menu handler. And we shouldn't get any errors. Fantastic. And we'll just add some comments here. So if we uh, do a very quick test, we can say g dot set color color dot black and g dot fill text or oh, say uh, draw string, and we'll say start the game. Uh, we can have. Uh, exit the game and if we wanted to we could even have a kind of option menu and options okay and if we just put this in the middle of the screen and the way we're going to do that is I think our menu handler is gonna ask for the window and so we'll create a window W make it private and we'll just set W to equal the W that we get when we create the window and that w when we create the window is going to be equal to the window fantastic window <laughs> and uh so what we're going to do is come in here and say w dot um well actually what we can say is and uh, so basically, if we want to do this the proper way, what we're actually going to do is um, we're going to create a couple of strings first. So we'll say string uh, start game string. And we'll also have option string and exit string and <clears throat> if we just change these over to those that should work nicely and we have to actually set these so we'll uh, just copy and paste that and we'll say start a new game options and exit okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to say um okay to do this properly we need to get uh g dot get on metrics and then in here we put g dot get font and we're just gonna make this into a new font metrics font Font M, we'll call it. And so basically, what we see now is um, W dot width divided by two <coughs> and 
Oh, it made it static, so we didn't actually need the... We could have just gone window.width. Uh, divided by 2, and then what we want to do is actually minus uh, font m dot string width start game s uh, divided by 2, I think. Let's give it a go. <clears throat> um, Okay. Ah, oh, it's working. And you can see it's centered in the middle of our uh, screen. And so now if we were to copy this out and just change it over to Option S, and Exit S, and we can change where each of them are. Nice. Um, although we do have to change that in there. And now you can see that all centered. So <clears throat> uh, that's the beginning of our menu. We can make it a little bit nicer. Uh, let's work on that right now. I think the first place to start is we will also draw string. Uh, runny square, and we'll do the actually, we'll just copy this out. Actually, put it down here, we'll put it in here. Oh boy, okay, yeah, we'll put it in here. We'll make a new string, call it title S. Runny square, title S, title S, and we'll make this one a lot further up. Okay, and I want to change the font here, and we'll just make it Roman and 24. And hopefully I've remembered in style and size. Nope, 24 goes there. And here we're going to say font dot bold. Okay. That's a bit nicer. Okay. <clears throat> and, um... Okay, now what we're going to do is actually make it so this kind of functions a little bit. So we'll make a private in, or we can even make it a by selector. And okay, we're going to need to have key board input in order to make this work um, but let's just work on the graphics for now what I want to do is have a little red square that just shows us what we're currently selecting on the menu and so what we're going to do is set color to color dot red and we can do this text selector G dot set color color dot red G dot fill rect and we'll just put this at um okay we'll put this at select x select y and we'll make it 64 by 64 and what we're going to do, actually, so I'm going to put the selector after the text. 
And um, the reason why is because we're going to need to make these or uh, Okay, we're going to make a selector X and selector Y up here and make them integers, in fact. And we'll set them to zero initially. And, um... If selector X is not equal to zero. And so if you run it, we shouldn't see anything. Now, actually, we are also going to need the selector. That's equal to zero. And we'll say if selector equals zero. Um, selector x equals that, which is where we're drawing the string, and then we'll minus 64, and we'll make a private int uh, selector left buffer. And this is just how much space between the string and um, and our little selected thing. So um, why is that up there? Ah, and then we'll also say uh, select a y equals. Five. Um, minus g dot get font dot get font uh, get size divided by two. Minus 32. There we are. Uh, actually, I don't know if we need... Ooh. I don't think we need this. I think it's just uh, 255 minus 32. And um, we'll change this also selector width. And we had it as 32. I think we're going to make it 16 actually. So all these 32s, oh sorry, we had at 64, and I just want to replace all of these, and we'll place it down here too. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer. Okay, so now in keyboard handler, what we're going to do is first of all, just down in key pressed. I'm going to put this in a very big if statement and just say uh, if w dot uh, game state equals game state dot game and same in key released if w dot game state equals game state dot game Um, then we're going to say else if w.gs equals game state dot menu and same here and if it is the menu we're going to say w.gs dot menu dot key press key Oop. 
oopsies sorry uh no w dot menu i meant to say dot key press key and so we'll make the key press function as well and um if a key is pressed uh, we're going to say if key equals key event dot vk s uh, selector s equals one okay oh and we forgot to do this for the other two so if selector equals one, then we're going to set it to be the values corresponding. Fantastic. So that was working quite nicely. Um, And if it's W, select uh, minus equals one. And we're also going to just put a limit on this and say and select uh, it's less than three. And select uh, is greater than so. Uh, so that's working except for this needs to be two. And there you have it. We can now select on our menu uh, from a couple of different options, which is very nice. Um, okay. So a couple of things. First of all, our title is not all that impressive at the moment. So what we're going to do about that is just change the font for the title. And we'll make it a lot bigger, I think, up there. Maybe not quite that big. Yeah, more like that. Alrighty. And now, uh, if Enter is pressed, uh, and selector equals zero, now what we can say is w dot game state uh, equals game oh actually we're gonna how are we gonna do this okay we're gonna say w dot go to game and so we'll create that method go from the menu to the game and in here, all we're going to say is gs equals game state dot game and level dot restart level. And so that seems to be kind of working. Okay, player is null. I believe if we generate the level first, that should work. Nope. <laughs> um. <coughs> uh, tch, tch, tch. Okay, we'll just generate the level instead.
And there we are. So that's working quite nicely. We just had to swap it around, uh, basically because it was trying to render items before uh, items existed. And uh, so we just swap them around and that should work nicely. And we're also in the menu. Uh, change this so we can also use uh, the down key. We'll do the same thing with the others. And so this is the OR operator, in case you've forgotten. So we're just saying uh, if either the arrow key or WASD have been pressed, oh, and enter is fine, then it will accept both as input there. Fantastic. So we have a basic menu. Um, we can come in keyboard head handler and say in game. If key equals key escape. Then we're just going to say w dot game state equals game state dot menu. And so now we can restart as many times as we want, which is quite nice. Um, okay, we do have a few problems. First of all, when we go to the menu, we should also probably say w.level.restart level. Oh, actually, we can say instead of generate level here, I think it should be restart level. Let's see if it works. It doesn't work. Um, Okay, I think it's working nicely. So we just had to put generate level up the top uh, because uh, otherwise the player doesn't exist. And we can't set the player's X unless we've generated level. Okay, fantastic. So our menu's working pretty nicely. We'll also just implement the exit button. So uh, select is two and end is pressed exit. Game. And we'll just say system dot exit zero. Fantastic. So that is pretty much a basic menu setup. Um, while we're here, I think we're going to make a kind of game over screen as well. And so what we're going to do is come into level handler and in restart level. Okay, no, we're going to make another void called uh, die or lose game. And here we can say w.gamestate equals game state dot game over. Okay. And um, the game over game state is going to be facing into the game state. So we can actually say here, 
if the game state is game over, we also want to render the level. And same with the update. And okay, so in um keyboard hand uh not keyboard so in uh level handler we want to say if games if uh, w dot game state equals game state dot game over Then we're just going to say g dot set color color dot black g dot your stream theme over and if we come back into menu handler we'll copy this out. Um, come back into level handler. Say w dot width divided by two, or window dot width divided by two minus uh, font m dot get. Um, Right up. Dot string width. Dot string width of game over. And we'll put this at window dot height divided by two. And so now if we die, oh, it's not working. Oh, because wherever we use restart level, we actually want to say lose game. And there and there as well. And so now if we die, You can see we no longer have control of our player. Continues going, but we've got this little game over screen. And so now what we want to do is in keyboard handler, we'll say else if w.gs equals game state game over if key if key equals key event dot pk space then we're going to say w dot level dot start level so now if we die we press space then it should work the only other thing we have to do is put the game state back to game which we can actually do in restart level. Fantastic. Yeah. Don't like that we got an error there. But if we give it a go, you can see that things are working nicely. And we'll just also add a few instructions in. So if we come back. Uh, two level handler and we come up here we'll say game over and then under that press space to continue and Should be defining this by two, I think.
And there we are. And now if we press space, we come back. Here we're in our options. Uh, so here we're in our menu. And uh, the last thing to do, I guess, is the options, which is not going to be a whole ton of stuff, but we can do options uh, just to show you around. And it's going to be the exact same keyboard handler. Oh, sorry, menu handler. Uh, if it's the options. Uh, VK. Enter and select it is one. We're going to say W dot. Go to options. Oh, we can just say w dot gs equals game state dot options and there's not going to be much here because we haven't really done anything um we can um we can just copy menu handler and make option handler And it's going to be pretty much the exact same. Um, okay, let's come into window. Copy out menu and make options. Come down here. And so that should all be working. Okay. So now all we can do instead of start game, <clears throat> we're just going to have one option. And we'll just, for now, we'll just make it sound on. Or we can make it. Yeah, sound on. And we'll make a back button. So if selector is zero, if selector is one, we'll reduce the selector max by one. Um, sound and exit. Instead of exit, we'll just say w dot go to menu, or we can even just say w dot game state equals game state dot menu. Get rid of that one. And let's give it a go. Okay, so we can see it's working decently well. We do have to come in here and also just do the same thing we did for the menu. <coughs> and we're just going to change this to options. And so now if we come to options, it's still not working. Why not? W dot options key press and now we can go back and if we hit sound we'll, we'll make a boolean and we'll make it public static boolean sound on which is equal to false oh we're actually making the Sound handler. We'll call it muted equals false. We'll also make a clip C or clip clip, which will also make a public static clip. 
And uh, so what we're going to do is in option handler, we can get rid of this. And instead, um, if ent is pressed, staff w dot code to game. We're going to say um, sound handler dot muted equals sound handler dot muted. So we just set it to the opposite value of what it currently is. And here where we say sound, we're going to add off or on. Um, depending on if sound handler dot muted. So basically what this is saying is if sound handler dot muted, we are going to add to sound off. Otherwise we're going to put on on. And so what that actually looks like is if we come in here, you see it works quite nicely. And uh, currently we don't play music at all, <laughs> but um, what we would do also is say if sound handler dot muted sound handler dot clip dot stop and that will give us an error because clips equal to null and sound handler clip is not equal to null. Fantastic. And then uh, all we have to do is say in menu handler, when we go to the game, uh, we can also start our music. What am I doing? What am I doing? Uh, so we were in window. That should be a comment. Sound handler dot music, and so hopefully this works. So if we were to normally just hit new game, uh, we're getting a concurrent error again. <laughs> why? Why is this happening? I think this might be because. We go to the game too early. I think it might be because we go to the game too early. So if we put that at the end, hopefully that will fix that. We keep. If anyone else gets it, let me know. Okay, so we into the game. The music's working. Okay, so if we were to mute it start the game. Ah, it's still working. That is a problem. Uh, oh, we only want to loop if it's not muted. That should fix that, hopefully. Also, when we return to When we return to the menu, I also want to say sound handler dot clip dot stop. So now we've got no sound. And now we've got sound. So we've got a very basic menu here, uh, we'll add a little bit of animation and then I think we'll call it for today. And so all we're going to do is come into option handler, oh sorry, menu handler. And we'll make a private int y offset, which we'll set to zero. We'll call it title y offset.
and we are basically going to say pi y offset plus equals one and then we'll make it boolean while title y offset additive pi y offset um we'll just call it and if title y offset add and title y offsets less than a hundred else title y offset add equals false Actually, we'll just do it this way. If title y offset add, else title y off offset minus equals one, and then we'll say down here, if title y offset uh, it's less than zero, or title y offset. Uh, actually, we'll make it 100 both directions. Then, to the title, we're just going to add title y offset. And we're getting errors somewhere. Oh, uh, all we have to say here is uh, we just want to set title y offset add to its what it is not currently set to and basically this should just give us a little animation here <coughs> which is far too profound at the moment um we'll make it 25 5 and 0.1 and 0.1 and we'll turn it into a Convert it to an int here. Put F there. And now we've got a little bit of animation on our menu. Nothing too crazy. Uh, but just a little bit of fun. And so now we've got our game over screen. We've got our um, we've got a nice little menu here. So I think that's all for today. Uh, hopefully the tutorial was too long. I'm scared to look at the time, but I think we've made some great progress, and we can definitely work more on the menu. I think in the last tutorial we're just gonna kind of fix all the issues we have. Um, but yeah, I think it's working nicely. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please comment down below like comment subscribe do all the fun stuff i uh honestly i really appreciate it if anyone does it so it makes my day so, <laughs> so yeah. um hopefully you you enjoyed the series and we should be done soon so thanks for staying tuned and i'll see you next time